Hello. I think I'm live. Um, I can see myself. It says preview mode, uh, but I think I must be live. So it's a pleasure to be here. I, I'm very happy to be back on a, a sketchy live stream and have a, a wonderful uh, image for us to work from today of Janelle Del Cid. Um, how's everyone doing? And where are you here from? Silesh, Hilda, Molly, all these wonderful names of wonderful people that I know. Dean, Cheryl, Massachusetts, London, Pennsylvania, Canada. Um, cool. Uh, it's 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 such a pleasure to be here with you. I hope that you're you're all doing well. Um, great to see some names from the Ink Naturally class. Uh, I'm going to be working with Natural Ink today, um, which I love. Uh, Ah, okay. Um, for the background information, it says here that comments and reactions are not available. I don't know why I'm seeing it like that. Um, but I can move my my window over here. So I've got the chat there. But unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be able to bring your comments up here. Because um, it says comments are not available. But I can see them. And... Um, and we can we can draw together. I'd love to hear from you if you have any questions far away um, in regards to ink making, my process. Um, it's great to see so many familiar names. If there's anyone here who's not yet familiar with my work. Um, hey Cindy, I'm glad to be back too. Uh, yeah, if you're not familiar with my work, I do a lot of natural ink work and I love making the ink from um, the plants in my surroundings. And the, all of the all of the images behind me uh, are all made with natural ink. Um, yep, the, there's the link uh, in the chat. Um, and I just love share, sharing ink making with people. It's such a, a beautiful way to engage with the world and to move through our surroundings. And um, I just love the curiosity which is awakened by um, seeing things and thinking, oh, could that? Could that be ink? Could I maybe make ink with that? Um, that being said, you've got to be um, always take care to self-educate yourself and um, make sure you're not working with poisonous uh, plants um, or if you are, that you take necessary precautions. But in general, there are enough non-poisonous plants um, that there's plenty already to experiment with and have fun with. Um, Okay, so that comment thing doesn't work anymore. That is sad, sad face. Um, yeah, ink making, so cool. I was, um, so poppy is like an early summer um, plant, which is just so abundant and so beautiful here. And a few weeks ago, I was uh, out with Holly in the fields. And here's a photo. Um, Holly saw the poppies and she was like, oh, we can make ink. And it's it's just so nice uh, foraging with my kids. Holly's going to be three in October. Um, so Holly and I were collecting poppy petals. And, um, and poppy is such, a, such an abundant plant as well. So um, that's another important thing. Self-educate and don't, uh, um, don't take too much. Don't forage too much. If, you, if it's in great abundance, which so many things often are in nature, um, then you can you can feel comfortable taking uh, what you need to make your your ink and supplies, um, and yeah, I just love that with poppy that it's especially here where I live in central Germany. It's such a, an abundant plant, um, and it makes such a, a lush, deep red color. It's really a pleasure to work with. Um, thank you, Margie. I'm glad you love my work. Um, anyone who loves my work and is enjoying this can hit the hit the like button, because that's always nice. Um, yeah, so I love natural ink. And here's, um, here's my little jar of uh, late summer poppy. 
um, the fresher it is, the the redder it is. Eventually, um, or the more vibrant, it, it will turn into like a dark brown, like or first dark red and then towards brown. Um, but the fresher it is and the, the faster you use it, um, the more vibrant it will be on the page as well. Um, I have some lemon with me too, because lemon is uh, just a wonderful modifier. Um, you can change the color a bit with that, so that will be fun. Um, you can use whatever you want. I, I imagine most of you probably don't have Poppy Petal ink at the moment. So um, maybe you could say in the comments what you're working with today. And um, I'll bring up Janelle. I'm not sure if she's with us at the moment, but she might be popping into the chat. Here is this uh, amazing photo of Janelle. Janelle is such a wonderful muse and uh, has become a great friend. Um, we've done a few things together in, in the past year. And um, Janelle is just like a, a fountain of inspiration and creativity. Um, so on the Sketchy app, definitely check out Janelle and um, at Derseed on Instagram. If you look at my Instagram account, you'll see um, I've, I've tagged Janelle. And Janelle just has so many amazing reference photos. So it's always a pleasure to, to work with Janelle. Thank you very much for, for sharing such amazing inspiration with us. Um, I'm going to show you my workspace. Here's a sketch I did of Janelle in pencil. Um, so very different to what I'll be doing today because I've got my stick pen here and this is carved from an elder branch. If you're interested, I'll just put me in here. Whoop. Two. There we go. Um, if you're interested in this, in my on this YouTube account, sketch a YouTube account, and in my class, there's some um, information about uh, cutting these pens, carving pens, and you can use any any stick, really. Um, so this is an, an elder branch, and it's a particularly beautiful one. I love it. Um, and some of them are just like sticks, and some of them are really um, stunning in their own right. So here's a, another one, which is just a just a stick, basically. Um, so that's what I'm going to be working with. I have my poppy petal ink here. Just get my reference. Um, and I thought I'd start with a quick sketch um, because I love quick sketches. And um, I, I do a lot of quick sketch practice. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you're probably aware of that. I host sketch sessions twice a week. Um, and so I thought I'd start with something quick first, uh, just to warm up and get familiar with the, the reference. Um, and then I, you may have noticed, I always have a pencil with me. I often go straight to ink, but I'm going to, for the longer drawing today, I'm going to um, do a preliminary drawing, get things in the right place. Um, since the pencil 30 faces with 30 day. Uh, 30 faces, 30 days, graphite. Um, earlier this year, I've really gotten back into um, using pencil a lot more. So, um, But for now, I'm just going to start with this quick sketch. Uh, if you don't have the reference yet, the, the link for the photo should be in the, the comment section below. Um, so you can download that or just um, sketch from the screen here. So I'm just starting with the, the eye. Um, it's just a lovely shape um, and what I really like about these um, broad edge pens as many of you know is that um, you get a really lovely variation in the line quality um, and sometimes just a quick sketch can be so um, so satisfying and so vibrant and alive um, so that's something I enjoy a lot. Um, and I I'm just work by observation, um, not going into like planning it too much, so just kind of like, okay, where is the eyelashes? And there's kind of this um, interesting curve in the nose. Uh, and if we look down from this eyelash shape here, drop it down to about here, that um, maybe that's where we can place the nostril and just constantly going around um, 
finding a gauge on where we're at and finding landmarks that help find the way around the face. Um, that's how that's how I do it. Um, just uh, ah, what a poke berry. Cool. I'll I'll, um, I'll take a moment uh, occasionally to to look at the comments. So if you if you have questions, I shall endeavour to um, to respond. Um, if we follow that line, we've got this angle, the line of the 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 eyelids, the eyelashes sloping down there, and this little highlight just kind of um, create that shape. Um, and yeah, this is gonna this is just fairly loose, so don't don't worry too much about your accuracy. Um, we we have lots of time, so we'll do a more um, Maybe a more careful one, or just a second one. Um, you know, not placing any kind of value judgment on either of them. Um, just having fun drawing. So here's this nice curve, um, really, just such wonderful, clear um, light and shadow shapes to work with in this reference. Um, so nice. Um, so it's interesting here to see like the corner of the mouth, how far is, is that going out into the, um, the eye shape that we established in the beginning. And there, there are many opportunities as we're drawing along to kind of internally or um, take stock of where we, where we are, where we're drawing. Um, if you want, you could like use a tool to a straight edge to kind of compare. But the more you practice and the more you train it, um, then you can just kind of go with it, and it's just um, it's just ink and and paper. You can also start again. Be fearless. Be courageous. Oh, and this paper, by the way, is um, Hanamule Nostalgie paper, which I like a lot. Um, I think it's ninety pound, one hundred and ninety GSM. Fairly smooth. It's this nice big, it's like a curve, and then it just comes straight down here. And that's almost like it <laughs> for this one. We could just uh, flood all those areas with ink. This paper doesn't like getting too wet, but we'll just do it anyway. Um, I don't have my good brushes with me. I, I left them in my... Um, studio space but who needs good brushes this is just a old thing acrylic brush and um, it just needs to be able to hold some ink really and just come around and flood all these areas it's uh, really uh, it's just such great reference I love these kind of um, strong shadow shapes especially working with ink um, who's excited about inktober coming up I am. So there's going to be a, a if you're not already aware of it, there's a, a sketchy art school Inktober group uh, where if it's it's not like a class like it was last year, um, but it's just going to be a whole bunch of people working from the same reference, which is going to be super cool. Um, I can't wait to see what reference has been chosen for us. Um, all right, for this quick one, that's that'll do, I guess. <laughs> um, there are different kind of subtleties, different kind of levels of intensity of shade, um, but in a very reduced form. That's like this is a nice way to get acquainted with this reference. Um, yeah, that'll do for now. And now I'm going to move over to some watercolor paper, which I really love, and. Um, we still have plenty of time to, to work on another drawing. Um, now would be a good time to check the, the chat. Uh, yes, join the October group. There is the 
um, the link. Molly's excited about Inktober. That's good. Um, Pokeberries, Pokeberries. I, um, I've seen, so we moved September last year um, and where we now live in this village, I, last week I saw this like giant bush of uh, pokeberry and I'm excited about those being ripe because it's such an incredible magenta colour. And I recently saw some um, blackthorn, I think. Uh, which I had not used before, so there's some um, new plants here that I've been able to discover. Um, all right, so now I'm going to start with this pencil drawing. Yeah. So we, we've already just become a bit acquainted with the face um, of our wonderful muse, Janelle, here. And yes, I like Janelle is just so iconic, right? Just such, such amazing, such a, a super muse. Like, it's um, Sketchy having changed its name to Museum, the Sketchy app, uh, Museum by Sketchy, um, playing on the, the Muse, um, which is such a, you know, such an amazing resource and community. Um, and Janelle was one of the first muses I became aware of where I was just like, I've seen that face before, I've seen it before. A lot of people have drawn this person. Um, and then... The... So I'm starting in the same place that I started with the last drawing. Um, so yeah, it's just like, oh, heaps of people are drawing Janelle. Who is this Janelle? And um, Janelle just has so many incredible reference photos. Really a, a wonderful muse and wonderful person. And if you, if you do check out um, Janelle's Instagram account, you'll notice that next Thursday and Friday, Janelle's hosting a surrealist sketch session. I also host weekly sketch sessions, and Janelle does once a month. Um, and she puts just so much love um, and whimsy and magic into the sketch sessions. Um, and holds these amazing poses with just this treasure trove of um, costumes and props that, that Janelle has. So um, come along to Janelle's sketch sessions because they're, they're super cool. Do, get to draw Janelle live and I think the live drawing experience. Uh, it's on Zoom, via Zoom. It's just uh, really great. Janelle's here, Janelle's here. Oh, cool. Nice to have you see your star in the chat. Um, okay, Jacqueline, uh, the only thing apart from poppies that I have in here is water. Um, and that's what I love about poppy. It's one of the easiest, um, most giving, uh, ink, uh, fl floral inks that I know. It's incredible. You just chop up the petals and put them in water and the pigment just over the course of like a couple hours, um, or leave it overnight, uh, by cutting up the petals, it just allows that amazing vivid red to flow out into the water. It's it's really incredible. Is this? I hope this is dark enough for you to see my my drawing here. Um, how is that? Is this dark enough? I think it's a bit of a delay with the answers, but um. Um, yeah, Dean, uh, I think uh, Sketchy can answer that, but I think it's in the Sketchy Art School that the Inktober thing is happening. So you don't need an iPhone. Um, and that's the cool thing that uh, you can do it on a desktop, Android, whatever, um, with the Sketchy Art School. That's where the group is, and I think that's where the photos will be shared, right? Have I understood that correctly? Um, so you don't need an iPhone to participate in the Inktober group. Um, so I, I mentioned my process, the way I'm looking around with the last quick, the quick drawing. Um, so I'm doing the same thing now, essentially, um, but just outlining the spaces. Um, so I know I'm like creating this, um, color in drawing, like my own 
coloring book um, by shadow mapping with the pencil and then I'll be able to make sure I've got everything where I want it to be and um, and then come back with the ink and have a lot of the uh, a bit darker would help it would wouldn't it um, all right maybe I can push darker I'm drawing kind of let's see if that helps thank you for speaking up on that Holly uh, Molly Holly's my daughter and I hear her crying downstairs all right I'll just go around and um, darken up those a bit that's the advantage of working directly to ink that it's just it's just all dark and wonderful that looks better doesn't it um, makes it easier for you to see so it's almost almost like going straight to ink you know where you really commit you've got these bold lines and um, and you go with it and draw, working a lot with ink has really influenced the way I work with pencil as well um, I, I noticed that during the the graphite 30 faces 30 days in um, that was February right uh, having not drawn with pencil for years not really using it much um, focusing on ink, I realized that all that ink work has really um, influenced my decision-making process as I'm drawing. That looks like it might be a bit high. Um, but there's this thick eyelash there. Is it? So we have this, um, because of the angle of the head, oh, I'm like out of this frame here. Um, the, it's, we often, you know, we practice a lot of like doing frontal faces, especially if you, um, in the beginning, it's like it's really clear. You've got this, the vision of the face and you learn like these proportions between everything. And when things are moved, um, then it's like, oh, it's all different than, than I've learned. Um, but there is like a, you see that rhythm to the face. Uh, so you have like the, the eyes, the nose, um, the, like the center of the mouth. There is this curve to the mouth, of course. Um, but there are these, this kind of, if we follow that rhythm of the eyes, nose, mouth, maybe hairline, um, and you can see how they are in relationship to each other, can be really helpful. Because I know, um, you know, well, I think the mistake I've just made here is when you start drawing and you've got like, if you, you, you know the eyes are like here and here, um, and uh, there's a tendency to like put them in the wrong place when it's in perspective um, because you you know that they are like this and that's you actually not looking at what you're actually drawing um, but your mind kind of putting it where you think it is so with my approach to, to doing a preliminary drawing or drawing in general um, looking like really looking carefully is the key to um, building the drawing and the portrait so I'm glad I caught that because I think it's more like down here um, there's me <laughs> yeah and this is a you know it's just a really great tool I don't even know if I have an eraser here um, on the floor. Um, Sabrina, what was your question? I think loose. If the ink is with water. Was there another question? Uh, hola. Um, if you want to put in a question again, Sabrina, uh, that'd be great. Um, so here you can see there's this um, distance between the, but like the end of the nose here, which is maybe a bit lower, and then 
where the illuminated part of the eyelid is almost in alignment with that end of the nose. So if we've got the angle right, um, and I see that that's a bit lower, and just kind of step out from there because there's this nice block of shadow. Um, just to find whereabouts that that is. It's kind of some subtlety. Um, illumination in the bottom eyelid. Um, it's quite subtle. The ink. The ink is with water. It's poppy petals and water. Um, poppy petals, I don't know if you saw the image earlier. These are the poppy petals in their um, original state. And I just chop them up and put them in water. Um, there's no alcohol in there. You can make alcohol inks, um, but this is just with water. Yes, Hilda. That is an amazing book. Um, make Ink and the Organic Artist are two incredible resources, which um, I recommend to everyone. And if you would like to combine ink making and portraiture, then you can check out my Ink Naturally class because I cover um, different processes of ink making in there and we practice a lot of, from a lot of awesome reference photos together. Um, so here it's like um, taking more time to establish this, get things in the right place, but once it's done, and then you just come in and like fill in the shapes with ink and the, the inking phase is going to be really fast. Um, just wondering about this space between the nose and the lips. It's maybe a bit far. Um, And that's something that can make a big difference when you're um, with the likeness. Just that different. I've noticed often that that distance between the, the nose and the lips, um, it can really influence the likeness a lot. And you don't always have to go to the likeness. Um, but I notice it's a really helpful to, to double check that space, these distances like between the, the eyes and the nose um, or the bottom of the nose and then the nose and the lips. Um, it can be such a, a subtle difference there um, that will take you from like having all the features drawn right, the lips are drawn right, the nose is drawn right, the eyes are drawn right. But if that space is just a little bit too far apart or too close, um, then it's uh, it'll look like a, a new person sometimes. You get to create new people. So just lifting it up a little bit. It's, uh, I saw earlier that someone said they're using red cabbage ink, right? That's awesome. I love it. And um, it's such, such an incredible color. And then experimenting with modifiers, it's, it's so, so fun, so cool. And it's so accessible, like, I don't know if um, if it's something you get everywhere, but um, there are a lot of things you can, that we eat that you can use to to make ink with, which is great. Has anyone who's drawing along um, made many inks recently? I just made some walnut husk ink yesterday, which is awesome. Um, Made some elderberry ink. Uh, also made some into syrup that we can drink. Made some elderberry jam recently. Also made some acorn ink recently.
there's this cool little shadow here. Um, shadow highlight. It's kind of dark, but it's a highlight, not a shadow. But this is just a really nice little shape, that edge of the collar. Um, this is a really nice angle. You've got like the, the whole kind of flow of the the side of the face and the jawline, it's all flowing down, and then that angle just kind of holds it. Um, it's, it's, it's fairly subtle, but it's, um, I think it's really nice. Nice detail. Um, the temperature of the water does not matter. Uh, you can do it with cold water. If it's warm, um, then the pigment will be released faster. With, with a lot of, usually with most of the floral inks that I've made, the temperature does matter and heat helps. But um, poppy is great because you can do it even with um, cold water. Sometimes I'll just, um, just kind of, it helps me as I'm looking, trying to see if I've got things in the right place. Um, just kind of like, as I look at the reference, just kind of like stepping the, the pencil or the pen, kind of putting these points to see, okay, is that really where I want it? Um, Cause sometimes throughout the process of the drawing, we'll like stretch out the face or make it a bit wider. I'm just checking in on those things. Like I sometimes I love it when it's distorted. Um, but yeah, just checking on it can be can help you get close to the likeness. If you have the time and desire. Okay, so that block of shadow here, and there's this nice curl of the hair, and that's most of the, the face shape sorted out, I think. So soon we can start putting some ink down, or I will be. Um, oh, indigo blue. Blue that turns red as it ages. That sounds amazing. Oh, Staghorn Sumac. That's so good. The um the the flowers, the fruit of the sumac, um, you get a really nice red colour from it. But the leaves, leaves and the branches actually are also super high in tannin. So you can make really nice um ink with that and adding iron to it will make it really dark, similar to acorn ink. Um, so yeah, sumac is a really good one. That's that's awesome. Um, and the 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 fruit of the sumac, um, the red upward growing fruit flower is uh, edible and has this really tangy taste. And it's all um, I can't remember what it's called. It's a it's a kind of uh, acid, um, and it's used in uh, Middle Eastern cuisine and um, has this nice tangy taste to it. But there's also white, low hanging um, poison sumac. Don't, don't taste that. Um, but the red one is, is really amazing. It's important to read up on these things and be educated about the plants you're using. Um, I, I tend to use elder mostly for my stick pens. Uh, it grows a lot here. It's, um, it can be hollowed out wonderfully. I haven't with this one. But by hollowing it out, you can make like a reservoir for the, the ink. Um, An elder is just like my favorite plant. Um, you can build flutes with it. You can make delicious things with it. Uh, you can make ink with it. You can make pens with it. Uh, it's really cool. But another really good one is walnut for, um, for these. Oh, this is cool. I don't know what this is. 
but this is nice. Um, walnut is nice and hollow. Uh, cherry is really good. You can just make a sharpened uh, stick pen, but I um, you can sharpen them just like a pencil, so it has a, a fine point. But I really enjoy working with these flat edged, um, broad edged pens. And for those, anything that's hollow um, is really good. Uh, for for Zythia, if that's how you pronounce it in English, for Zutia, you can use that as well, and you can use the flowers to make a yellow ink. Um, that's hollow. But yeah, Elder is my most used uh, um, stick pen, stick plant, um, and it often just has such incredible shapes. Uh, it's just a treat discovering the the many faces of the plant and how it grows and. Um, all right, I think that's enough pencil. Um, now I'm going to take this uh, elder wand and um, start filling in these shapes. Um, Hilda, you should definitely make ink with those acorns. The shelf life of inks varies tremendously. Um, a lot of the floral inks will, um, it's, it's super interesting. I, I dry a lot. Uh, this is mellow, dried mellow, um, because the color um, keeps better uh, in the dried flower form than it does in a jar of ink. Um, so eventually that will change color. Um, Can you hear my kids crying downstairs? <laughs> I can. It's a bit distracting. Um, the iron-based inks, um, like acorn ink. This is an acorn ink I made recently. It's almost black. It's it's incredibly dark. Um, this this has a. I've had some that I've made years ago, and it, it stays really good. Interestingly, um, if you, I just noticed recently that some of my inks that I've had for a long time, if you have a metal lid, like I recycle all of these jars from food uh, to put inks in. This is a really nice pine cone ink. Um, the lids start to corrode, and um, I know uh, from from workshops and from features that I've learned from they say um it's good to use metal free uh containers so if you've got plastic or um, glass maybe with like one of these rubber seals these um for preserves um because the steel corrodes and then it it affects the ink um and then the jars are no longer sealed so actually yesterday i had to throw away a couple of lids and put new lids on because um they had corroded through um but yeah the those iron tannin and iron inks they um have a really good shelf life you can put cloves in your inks to prevent mold growth uh, which is a, a good thing to do cloves or whole cloves or clove oil and cloves are antimicrobial and um, prevent mold growth because it's um, the clearer your ink like the more filtered and the less bits of plant in there um, the more kind of resistant it is to mold growth also if you sterilize your jars and utensils um, like by boiling them out before you fill them uh, the same as you would if you were making you know, food that you want to keep for a long time, jam, jelly, marmalade. Um, it's good to, to boil it out first. And it's the same with ink. Um, that will help kind of uh, the shelf life, the life expectancy of the ink. Hydrangeas. Cool, I haven't tried them. 
<laughs> Molly, Molly had the lid rust shut. Uh, okay, that hasn't happened to me. Uh, um, at this this scale, this is. Um, I really enjoy working small with these stick pens. Um, at this scale, it's we can kind of go around and establish all the outlines and then fill in big areas with ink, which is going to be really cool. Um, but I really enjoy the um, working at a smaller scale with a really large drawing tool is something that I like a lot. But um, if you're making your own drawing tools, you can just scale them up. Some that I have are really super broad. This one is not particularly broad. But having, um, having a lot of those kind of outlines and shapes drawn up, you could almost just go in and start filling up the rest with the brush. Anything you want to, if you want to add a little bit more detail, because it's this nice area down here, if you've got the original um, uh, reference photo, you'll notice that I've cropped it to zoom into the the portrait, the face, um, but there's this really nice long light shape which has this lovely like knitted structure in it and nice shadows. Um, so if you want to like establish those forms, it's good like just with a stick pen or whatever to, to draw in those shadow shapes so that as you, when you come in with the brush and really start flooding it with color, you've already got those shapes established. <laughs> Janelle, it, it would be a pretty lipstick color. Um, I don't know how to make lipstick, but I guess you, you probably could make a nat natural pigment lipstick, right? So surely there are people doing it. There's a really amazing um, community on Instagram of uh, natural pigment people, um, and there's, there's bound to be people making natural cosmetics and makeup with, with earth pigments. That would be a cool thing to, to look into. I don't use much myself, but maybe if it was, uh, maybe if I was making it myself, I would start using lipstick. I remember in my childhood hearing that lipstick has fish scales in it or something. I don't know if that's. True. I'm not an expert on lipstick. All right. So I've just kind of um, the pencil drawing that I had established. I've gone around and kind of uh, just um, put all these shapes in, uh, like establish those lines, those contours where I want it to be, have like a crisp edge. Some of it I might um, wash out a bit, but from here I can we can just kind of fill that up um, and, and see how it looks. Um, why do I like to use sticks? It's I think it has a lot to do with why I like. Um, there are a couple of things. The sticks, um, working with the pen, you can get a much, I, I find you, you can get like a really, um, they have a lot of line control, which you can have with the brush as well. Um, but sometimes, particularly with darker inks, I find when you work with a pen, um, you'll get a darker line. And if you're working with a brush, it's a more like diluted line. Um, I often have had that experience. And I just love the thing of, um, like working with the natural inks or making your own drawing tools. Um, I just love being in nature and I love creating my own tools. And it's, um, 
the knowledge that that like there there have been special occasions where I've collected certain um, branches or um, where I've foraged certain plants or I've found something new and interesting and maybe I was out there with my kids and maybe it was a beautiful day maybe it was raining um, but I've found something and I've collected it and I've turned it into a tool to make um, art with and for me that um, that element of the story of the origin of the material um, becomes part of the artwork which everyone else looking at it um, is not aware of but for me um, I, I really enjoy it. So I think um, technically as a tool I really enjoy working with them. Um, I use I have some really cool like nib pen calligraphy pens. I'm just gonna start filling in or like flooding some poppy petal ink in here while I'm talking about things. Um, yeah, so I, I was working with metal um, like purchased uh, nib pens. Like I have one just on the side here, which sometimes I'll still use if I want like a super crisp line. Um, I might use that. But when you're working at a big scale, um, even sometimes when it's small, you can really get surprisingly crisp lines just with a stick. Um, and so there's that story part of it. Um, and I also like uh, um, I guess the zero waste aspect of it. But since I've made started making my own art supplies, because um, that was a part of what led me to it, um, was I had been doing a lot of I like did watercolor painting, then acrylic, and then oil painting, and and there was just so much trash and like. Um, some pretty intense stuff that you're discarding when you're working with these materials. And I would get like headaches and itchy lungs um, and all this like unhealthy stuff that I was using to try and create something beautiful with and then like creating garbage um, as well as the end result of the painting. Um, and then I knew someone who was making... Um, doing textile work with um, natural pigments. And, and then I was like, oh, maybe I could um, you know, do some of that with um, for portraiture and stuff. And then I started finding people on Instagram. And all right, um, I think earlier in that, I found the book, The Organic Artist, which um, has ink making and pen making and paper making and, um, all sorts of stuff in there. It's really cool. Um, yeah, and it just kind of gradually became the main thing that I really enjoyed working with. Um, so that was a pretty long answer to that question. Um, I'm just uh, just reading the comments here. Um, Shirley, in the Ink Naturally class, I have um, uh, there's a resource section, so it's broken up into like um, a couple of different portrait blocks, um, and there's also the resource section where I've got like I think is it maybe seven different um, approaches to making inks. Um, so it's the, the Ink Naturally class is like conceptualized that there's that resource section which shows different approaches that you can use for different materials. Um, and then there's the actual like portrait session section as well. Um, uh, where you can like, I've, I've covered a lot of different um, methods uh, of making inks. But recipes, written recipes, um, the books that we've already mentioned, Make Ink and The Organic Artist, are amazing references for that. So I'd encourage you to sign up for my Ink Naturally class if you're curious. Um, and I don't know many people, um, before I started teaching this class and seeing the amazing work um, that all the participants were creating, 
but um, I hadn't really seen a lot of people using natural ink for portraiture. Um, now I know more, um, and it's nice to kind of see that uh, community growing and because it's something that I love and it's nice to see other people getting excited by it too. So yeah, there are, um, you'll find a bunch of um, recipes or techniques um, in the class there. And none of it's really a secret, it's fairly simple. And I encourage people to experiment. Um, but as I mentioned in the beginning, it's really important to educate yourself and um, keep yourself safe because some plants are very poisonous. This is cool. Um, I've got a hairdryer here. I'm wondering if I blast it with a bit of heat because it's um, before you go into it, like, oh, I can put a little, little shade in here. Um, this would be, once this is done, a really nice kind of first layer and then you can layer it up. And I, I love the effect that's achieved by layering up um, layers of ink, of ink wash. You can get some really um, gorgeous things happening. Um, so I do, I, I don't know, the hairdryer is not super fast. And I'll... <laughs> uh, Rayanne, can't believe you spent so many dollars on exp expensive paints. I, I also have spent many dollars on expensive paints. Um, but since I started making my own inks, um, less so. Um, and this paper that I'm using, uh, is Hanamula Aquarelle Anniversary Edition paper. It's really like heavyweight paper. Uh, I love it. Um, I can't show you the the cover of it at the moment because um, this is very wet. Yeah, Molly, isn't it addicting when you start making your own inks? Molly was at a workshop in was it February or March? Um, and it's been so great to see the, the work that you're producing since then. Um, and Janelle, yeah, you should definitely uh, make some, some ink too. Um, I'm going to mute myself for a moment and just kind of wave the, the blow dryer over this just for a bit. But you can write questions in there and I can, I can read things. So I usually just enjoy letting it dry naturally, just leaving it, going away, coming back, because the way the ink pools, it can create really um, gorgeous shapes. It's, it's so much fun to work with the ink and see the way it moves and what it does. Um, but that can take hours. <laughs> um, maybe... If I if I came into this with a darker ink, it would yeah, I don't know if this is really gonna work. It need to be really, really dry. Um, but adding a, a darker ink in some of the those edge areas and then watching it kind of bleed out into the shape would be really cool. Um, but I do have a, a little piece of uh, culinary alchemical modifying magic um, 
that slice of lemon I showed you earlier. I like to play with that. So if you uh, um, if you've seen other live streams I've done, I've I've whipped out this magic trip trick a couple of times in the past. Um, but another super fun thing with uh, natural inks is you can play around with the pH value, um, which uh, ch changes the color of the inks. Um, so you can make them more alkaline, more acidic. Um, and there are, I've, in the class, I've covered different modifiers as well. You can use copper and iron as modifiers, which will, uh, they improve the light fastness of the inks and make them darker. Um, it's really cool. So we're, we're nearing the end of our time together. Um, with, as is often the case, I feel like this would be a great um, place to, to build upon, to keep going. Um, and by letting this dry and spending like another half an hour on it maybe, um, could really do some, some lovely things with this. Um, So if you've if you've been enjoying this, oh, interesting question about archival. So yeah, by adding um, modifiers, it can become more archival. Um, or I don't know if archival is the the right term. Light fast, um, and the the light fastness varies greatly. Um, and if you hang it on a wall and it's exposed to UV light, it's going to change color faster. Um, but I have these. I think this must be about five years ago five or six years ago maybe, that um, this is one of my favorite paintings of a uh, uh, Raghunath Kapil, who's a yoga teacher and singer from the Krishna core band. Um, I painted a whole bunch of yoga teacher portraits and this is in acorn ink. It's uh, not got any protective glass or um, any UV protection. And um, it still looks it's been hanging on the wall, it's been exposed to UV light and it still looks as good as it did uh, and as dark as it did um, those years ago when I when I first made it. Um, so yeah, those inks are quite good in terms of their light fastness. Um, the, 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 some of the subtle shading, which I, I'm really tempted to, to add now, but I think it needs to dry completely before that's added, which just would add another level of um, uh, you know, form to it, be nice. But this is not the right moment to do it. Um, here's, my, here's my piece of lemon. And I'm just gonna put some lemon juice on here, maybe even a, like a lemon stamp. Um, and you can see the way it starts to change the color. Um, so this is a really cool modifier and delicious. If the ink were darker, oh yeah, you can start to see it. Um, if the ink were darker, it would be a, have a more dramatic kind of um, reaction. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna continue working on this. I'll post the finished result. I'm gonna let this dry. And as I mentioned, it's gonna, I think this is a really nice basis. It, it'll be nice as is. Um, but it's going to be cool to like work into this, build upon it. Um, if you'd like to do more portrait drawing with me, um, joining Naturally class. Um, here's the, the quick sketch I did earlier in the beginning. It's got these cool blooms that have happened. Um, yeah, join the Ink Naturally class, join the Inktober group in the Sketchy Art School. It's going to be awesome um, drawing from references together. And my... My thing this Inktober is going to be, I'm going to be working all, um, all stick pens. Um, I don't know if I'm still live. It's just something just dropped out. Um, if anyone could tell me in the comments, um, then I'll keep talking. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to be working all, all stick pens this uh, October and um, 
if you would like to draw Janelle live, Janelle is hosting um, every month a surrealism inspired um, portrait sketch session. And I also host uh, weekly sketch sessions. So follow Janelle, follow me, follow Sketchy, um, like and subscribe. And um, if you're posting your work on, if you've been drawing along, um, inking along, and you're posting on Instagram, you can use the hashtag ink naturally and tag me. I would, I am still here. Thank you for letting me know. There's this weird delay thing where I'm talking and I'm seeing the chat here. And, um, but it's great to know that you're still there. It's, it's been, um, been an honor and a joy to be here with you. Um, yeah, so there's a whole bunch of things. Inktober's coming up, the Ink Naturally class. Draw Janelle live next week. Follow us all on Instagram. Um, yeah, and tag me, write to me. I love um, community and uh, chatting and um, getting excited about natural inks and portraiture. Um, yeah, and thank you very much for, for spending this time with me. It's, it's been a pleasure being here, being with you in this way. And I, I look forward to spending more time with you. Oh, and I also have a YouTube channel, which um, I posted something on yesterday, and I intend to, to add to more regularly in the near future. So I, um, you can follow, sub like, and subscribe my stuff on YouTube too. And Sketchy, of course. Sketchy is just an amazing community. Here. It's me. There. That's me in the chat. Um, so you can click on that and see my channel. Um, yeah, and I can't wait to see your renditions of Janelle because this is such an inspiring, beautiful image to work from. Thank you so much, Janelle. It was lovely to, to see your starry face in the chat. Um, and yeah, post in the Sketchy Art School, post on Sketchy, the, the museum app, Instagram, wherever you post, um, tag me and I'd, I'd love to see the work that you've made. So uh, I think that's it for today. I might just um, come over here and um, show you my wall and my avocado plant. Um, <laughs> thank you, Silesh. Thank you for your support. It's, it's, it's really lovely seeing you here as well. Uh, um, have you been doing a digital Janelle as I've been working with my petal juice here? Um, Silesh uh, is really vivid, amazing artwork. Um, check Silesh out on the museum app. Um, and all of you, I can't wait to see all of the work that you've created. And thank, yeah, once again, just thanks for hanging out together. And um, I look forward to further connection and sketching and fun together. Um, and if you're getting into the natural ink adventure then have a really wonderful time as i mentioned in the beginning these are all natural ink portraits hanging behind me many of them you'll notice from sketchy um, and from the ink naturally class and um yeah i just love working with natural ink and connecting to my surroundings and having that extra layer of story in my artwork through um working with the materials in my immediate surroundings so that's something um i just love sharing um, yeah, so that's it for all the thank yous, I guess. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It was a pleasure being here. And um, take care, be kind to one another, and I uh, hope to see you somehow soon. Bye-bye. Um,